this is uh, I am Jerome from the Bonsai Supply and my wife Mari is behind the cameras. So say hi to us Mari. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> good evening, good evening. I hope you guys are all well from wherever you are. Which brings me to my next point. Please let us know where you guys are tuning in from. We'd love to hear. Yes, so um, today we are going to do our monthly uh, demo, which today we have a Chinese elm with us. And as Jerome was saying, um, I am going to be looking at your questions. So make sure to ask all of the questions that you might have um, on the comments. And I'll try to go over all of the questions today. And Jerome will be working on this tree. He will be talking about um, about this species. Um, and you can see how he styles this tree. And you, as I said, you can ask questions. And yeah, please let us know in the comments if, um, where you guys are tuning in from. And I see, let's see. Uh, so we're going live on YouTube and on TikTok. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, we are we are the Bonsai Supply, and on TikTok and Jerome underscore Bonsai. So let's see. I'm gonna say hello to the friends here on TikTok. Um, hello, hello, guys. Uh, Quebec. All right. Hello. That's amazing. Right. Uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Let's see what else we have here. Um, on YouTube. Um, South Carolina. All right. Hey, Jennifer. Um, hello from Trinidad. Wonderful. Uh, hey, you all watching from Florida. Yes. All right. Florida. I love it. <clears throat> um, hey, Karen. Karen, also from Florida. I love it. I see, um, Luciana on TikTok. Fun. Right. Fun, fun. All right. So yeah, so while we wait for some uh, more of our friends to tune in, uh, let us know what we have here. Well, tell All us right. about this species. All right. So this is um, <clears throat> one of my very favorite bonsai species to work with, which is a, a Chinese elm. Um, what I like it about it so much is that as you can see, look at these little tiny leaves. They are naturally this size. And this is about as big as they get, but you can still reduce them to about half the size. So this is an awesome, awesome uh, tree to get started. For any beginner out there, it is very forgiving. It is a, a semi-deciduous tree, which means that it can live in a very wide range of climates. So you could actually have this if you lived in New York or if you lived in South Florida. So that's amazing. There's this huge variety of climates that you can grow this tree. Um, semi-deciduous means that basically that it doesn't have to go dormant in order for it to stay alive. And it also doesn't have to lose all of its leaves for it to stay alive. Meaning that if you grow this tree uh, in a more colder climate, like a temperate climate, you might actually get to see fall colors on this tree, which can be yellow or orange or red, and the tree will actually shed all of its leaves. However, in a climate such as like Florida, where it is a little warmer or maybe California, the tree might not lose all the leaves at once. It might shed a few here and there and then just regrow them once the tree starts to grow again. So very, very cool and very versatile species. Uh, very forgiving, like I said. And this was actually my very first bonsai tree. Well, not this exact one, but a Chinese elm. And that's why they have a special place in my heart. <laughs> yeah, they definitely make great bonsais. And um, that's why we chose it for this month demo and for uh people that are tuning in from for the first time uh we do these demos uh at least once a month sometimes we might surprise you with twice a month mm -hmm. and uh this is a time where jerome is gonna be styling this tree you can ask questions and after um this live this tree will go on an online auction so if you are in the U.S. and you would like to get the finished tree, we're going to go uh, for an auction for 48 hours on our, our website, thebonsaisupply.com. And you can participate if you are in the United States. And this tree can be shipped right up to you. And I also wanted to, I, I see on TikTok, they're saying happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. I also wanted to say... Um, 
belated uh, Valentine's Day. Yes. Right? Um, so, we're, yeah, we're celebrating today. Celebrating. And I uh, see Jennifer from Maryland on YouTube. Hello, Jennifer. Uh, Gerardo from Forest Hill Bonza. Hello, Gerardo. Uh, Chinese Elm was my first love. Yeah, I my yeah my first love them New York City here. Hey Chris, yes, definitely great species. And I see this question on TikTok asking where your accent is from, Juno. <laughs> so I was born and raised in Switzerland, but I have lived in the United States for the past fifteen years. So I guess my accent has not uh, disappeared altogether yet. So it's still there a little bit. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, it will never go away. Never um, get away. <clears throat> and I see uh, on TikTok, we just bought two bonsais on Saturday. That's awesome. Congrats in having, uh, well, um, joining the bonsai fam. <laughs> <laughs> I see Blue Jay Bonsai. Hello yeah, yeah. from Toronto. Wonderful that you're here today. And yeah, so let's see. Let's start with uh, maybe a 360 of this tree and let's see what will be. Share with everyone what your process is when you start working on a tree. Okay. And yeah. All right, so let's take a look at this tree. So this is the first thing that I do when, I mean, this is the first time I'm seeing, I just pretty much got to see this material at the same time as you guys do. Mari chose this tree and she said, here, this is what you're gonna work with today. And that was a couple <laughs> minutes ago. She does this to me all the time. Isn't she great? Oops, and. <laughs> So this is what I do, I kind of look at it on eye level, because obviously the tree is going to be a shorter tree, or I would call this a shorter, maybe a medium-sized tree, right? Small, medium, somewhere in there. So I like to look at it on eye level, and then I rotate it around. So I just go counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't matter, and I look at the tree from every angle, and I hope that I can see some, some angle where the tree looks best. And that's when I would stop rotating. So, I mean, this looks really nice, but with this one, I don't really like, okay. So one of the main issues that I detect right away, and I don't know if you can see that in the camera too well. This is TikTok over here first, right? So do you see these two branches that I'm ha holding, TikTok, and then YouTube as well? You see these two branches up here? Um, so these two branches up here, almost looks like two horns. Um, they, they are both competing for the uh, job of the, uh, of the leader, right, of the tree. We need to have one leader. So I need to uh, remove one of the two. I just don't really know which one I wanna remove at this point. So when I get to a point like this where I see that there's a problem section, one of them clearly has to go, I kinda see which one has more potential. and. Now that I'm looking at it, the tree from this angle, I kind of like this as a front. I don't know if you can see that. So the roots look the best from here. So that's kind of what I look for is first the roots, right? And then also where does the tree look the best? So the reason why I look for the roots, I look for the best part of the tree is because you can change all of this fairly easily with wire, a few cuts, but changing the root system is very difficult and it takes a very long time. So. I'm gonna settle on this as my front. And so this piece here in the front, which is this one here, one of the two horns, that one does not have too much to offer, but also it kills the taper. So if I were to remove the back branch, the taper would not be that nice. Like it kind of cuts off right in here and you kind of look at this elbow. Uh, it's, this kind of hits you right in the face and you lose the movement. So I think the back one would be a better candidate. And you might say, well, this back one leans to the back away from the viewer. You are right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little wire, prop up the tree from the back, and now the top that was leaning away is now leaning towards us, which means that I can now go ahead and cut off this big piece. So I always start with the biggest problems first, and this to me is the biggest problem. I have to eliminate it, and are you guys ready? Because I'm gonna cut it off right now. Yeah, right before you do that, I just wanted to read this nice message from Brad okay. on TikTok. 
It says, thank you for your videos. I love plants and fine bonsai. Fascinating. And he sends us 30 roses Woo! on TikTok. I That's love it. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to you. Yes. Uh, and before also you do that, I just wanted to say hello. You cannot stop me in front of a big To Stefano from Wim Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Um, and Michael has uh, from New Jersey and also a beautiful message saying, I wanted to say a big thank you guys. Your book and YouTube channel have helped me a lot on bonsai, on my bonsai journey. Thank you. And wow. P.S. Love your soil. Amazing. I love that. Wow. That's so amazing. with that much excitement, uh, let's, well, Thomas, Thomas, hello from Madeira, California. All right. So I think we're good. We'll say hello. Now go. Are you, are you sure? Okay. okay. <laughs> now we're already here. No, but thank you so much for the beautiful uh, comments. That's really nice. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to turn it towards you. You guys ready? Mario, are you ready? There's no. a big cup. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. See? Here we Even go. Even the train. Even the train is angry. <laughs> Here you go. All right. Now, some of you are going to ask this question right away, I know, so I'm going to beat you to it. Can I propagate this? Um, this piece is a little too hard, uh, too big, not too hard, too big to propagate. So. What I would propagate off of this would be smaller branches. So anything like this, you can cut off and actually uh, put into some soil and then this would grow. From here, the chances are very slim. Uh, Chinese elm is not a tree that grows well from big cuttings, but something like this, absolutely. And so you could actually cut off this entire section here and you could make a forest basically. Like you could uh, root all, all of these. That's actually a really cute uh, shohen. It would make a really cool shohen. I mean, you could you could have air layered this and turned it into, this is smaller than a shohen. This is like a super, super small tree, which I love though. It could have been cool, so <coughs> next time. I'll take it. Okay. You try to root it. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> okay, so now that I have the biggest problem out of the way. Oh, oh much better much better look at this now it looks so much better already so now you can actually look at the tree from the front and appreciate it you see the movement uh the canopy is leaning towards this side it's leaning forward a little bit and now i can start to wire the remaining branches i think i think i can pretty much keep all of this yeah i think i'm ready to wire if if, if i'm allowed to start the wire yeah all right all right let's so i know it. you um share a little bit what your process is at least to pick up the front or to see that <clears throat> can you share now how you get rid of some branches like yeah so once again it's always easiest when you look at the tree from the front when you get rid of branches so obviously i'm looking at the tree from the front um i'm going to need to keep these two branches down here um and then once I wire those, I'm going to make my way to the next set of branches, which will be here. So I always start from the bottom and work my way up to the top. Um, since I don't have uh, any branches on this side, uh, you might think that that could be a problem. But we can fix that because um, if we style this tree to look like a bonsai tree, we would style all the branches like this horizontally. But we could actually utilize this opportunity here and turn it into a more natural tree, meaning that we could take these branches and instead of placing them like this, we could place them more like that to fill in this section here and that will make it look like a, a natural deciduous tree as well. So I think that's what we're gonna go with here today. Yeah, I think that's gonna look great. All right. Okay, I get to work. <laughs> and I see on TikTok, they're asking what's a good bonsai for beginners and you are looking at it. You're this looking at it. Elms are great. Okay. Uh, species. Um, Elms are the best species because, like I said earlier, you can really grow them anywhere. Yeah. They're always happy. And they're fast growers too. They're fast growers, I love that. Um, and I see Jennifer's asking, does this tree winter inside in cold climates? So since it is like a, a semi-deciduous tree, you could technically grow it indoors. Like you could um, overwinter it indoors, yes. But you could also overwinter it outdoors, meaning you kind of have to decide what you want to treat this tree as. Like, do you want to treat it as a temperate tree or more as a tropical tree? And once you have made that decision, then yes, you can overwinter it inside or outside, but keep this in mind, okay? 
If you say, oh, I'm going to do tropical because I can grow it indoors, makes it easier for me, it sure does, but you will not see any fall colors. Something to keep in mind. All right, for those that are joining <coughs> me on TikTok and they're asking about this tree, this is a Chinese elm. And, um, what, okay, I, I, this question is very important and we actually made a TikTok about this, just making fun of it. Are all bonsais meant for, for outside? Um, the simple answer, yes. Uh, there's some varieties that you can grow indoors, like a few tropical trees such as ficus, um, dwarf jade. <clears throat> Those are good indoor species. But in general, you want to grow, for best success rate, you want to grow your trees outdoors because that's where natural trees, that's where real trees in the ground grow as well. Growing a tree outdoors is so much easier for you. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah, and I, um, I love this question on YouTube. Why didn't you defoliate? That's a very good question. So this tree came from Florida. As you can see, it started waking up, but all of my other trees are not waking up yet, uh, my temper trees. So I moved it right into my greenhouse and I'm treating it as a, a tropical tree. It is still waking up and it's pushing and that's why I'm not defoliating it now. If this was later on, like let's say maybe one month or two months from now, I would absolutely go ahead and defoliate it. It's just kind of a timing thing. Ooh. That's true. And uh, on TikTok, they're asking, is it okay if my Chinese elm lost its leaves during the winter? Yes. So if you grow it outdoors, it will naturally, if the temperatures are cool enough, so let's say below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it will naturally uh, on its own lose all of its leaves and it will be acting like a deciduous tree at that point. Okay. And just to clarify um, about the question about trees being outdoors, um, I see on TikTok they're all saying I have juniper, do they stay inside or outside? So outside. Outside junipers, yeah, and juni junipers for sure. Um, I mean, the procumbens, Nana, you could probably keep indoors. But to light, be honest with you, I know, you know, growing indoor trees uh, sounds like a lot more fun, I guess, for some people, or maybe it's more convenient. But truth be told, it is a lot easier outdoors. And here's what we do. Like, we grow all of our trees outdoors, but when we have company come over, we choose the nicest trees, we bring them inside, and then we display them. Kind of like as a... Uh, table decoration thing so yeah. that's what i would recommend you do if you can keep it outside um and this question is from youtube would you recommend this tree to be in a greenhouse at any point of the year um so i'm here in, in atlanta georgia where it gets semi-cold uh, i would treat it as a, a temper tree i would not move it inside the greenhouse but since this tree came from Florida, it had it had spent uh, like the last week or so in the greenhouse, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all right, and um, <clears throat> Karen is also saying it's a spring here in Florida. I need the organic fertilizer. Yeah. Take my money already. Lol. Well, <laughs> when I said it's coming out in spring, I meant uh, my spring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, can we have it by the end of this month? What do you think? Or next next month? What was the tell us tell us the date? This is top secret stuff. <laughs> uh, I think at the end of this month that could be doable. We will definitely let you guys know when it comes to the market. Um, we're just working out a few minor details, but we are so close to launch it. So please be patient. It'll be worth your while. But in the meantime, you can look at it here. <laughs> That's how it's gonna look. Um, let's see. Oh, and um, do you have to use wire for all of your bonsais? So you don't have to have to use wire, right? You can do clip and grow, meaning you can just use your scissors and clip and grow. But using wires is like a like a painter's, like an artist's paintbrushes, you know. Um, you can move a lot faster this way. Um, so I would recommend that you get to know how to wire, but you don't have, you definitely don't have, need to wire if you don't want to. 
Yes, I, I mean, I, I love how uh, sometimes it's playing about wiring and like having braces. Yeah, that's a, so. that's a very good <clears throat> way of describing it, right? Like we're putting braces on the trees, branches basically. Um, and so once I apply the wire, I can lay down the structure of the tree. And then once the wire starts to dig into the branches, we can then remove them and then the, the branches are set. And so wiring sounds like a daunting task, but it really isn't. And I think we do such a phenomenal job uh, describing uh, how to wire in our bonsai book, freestyle bonsai, like with pictures and step by step and how to choose the wire, etc., etc. And I think if you are new to bonsai, you definitely want to get that book and learn how to wire that way. Oh, but show them the book. That's hiding over there. <coughs> Look at how that beautiful cover and the beautiful book. So yeah, if you guys are uh, new in the art or if you already have yours in the art, I, I'm sure you will find in this book something uh, resourceful mm -hmm. for you to check out. We have amazing pictures and step-by-steps uh, techniques. So yeah, this is our book, Freestyle Bonsai, so. And so you can get it on Amazon. Yep. That's probably the easiest way to get it, right? Yeah, on Amazon. Um, and there you go. And actually on Etsy right now, we have a few copies that we sign and those are available on um, sign. So you can check out our Etsy store. Um, what is that called? Uh, it's called the Bonsai Supply. And there's a link on um, our social media as well direct to this Etsy store, but there you can get it signed. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it's like a couple of copies left. But yeah, all right. Let me see. Um, <coughs> okay, so this question, um, how do you keep a bonsai healthy mm -hmm. and when to know when to repot? Okay, very, very good question. So, young trees such as this one, I would probably repot this tree. Um, <clears throat> so actually when we were in Florida, we repotted all of our trees pretty much on an annual basis. They will grow so fast. But this tree right here, since it's such a young tree, I would repot it probably every year to two years. But the easiest way to tell if your tree is in need of repotting is to actually pay attention when you water the tree, right? When the water starts to pool on top of the soil, and it takes a little while to go down into the soil, that means it is root bound and it is time to repot that tree. Just don't repot it more than once a year. As they get older and older, like if you have like an 80 year old bonsai that's been in training for that long, you can repot it a little bit less than every one to two years. Okay, and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that's been so kind on the comments on YouTube saying that, um, it's a really good book, great book. I Thank love you. the book. Um, and <coughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's so sweet. We, we love to, to hear that. And and Garen is saying, absolutely love the elm species video. Yes. Thank you. And that is something we're trying to do now, which is um, you will see a technique with a, uh, a specific species, and then we'll show you like a class or like a basic of overall overview of that species and then we do the life of that species so species, species, species. so you have like their the overall picture you have what you can do technique you can try with the species you have an overview of the species itself and then we have the demo we can get to clarify some questions and we can get to wire uh this tree and also you can um get it to you so if you really love the species after all those videos then this is a good um place for you to participate in our, in our auction and that responds to that question that i see on youtube saying are you doing auctions today yes yes so this tree will go on the youtube auctions on our, our website the bonsai supply.com uh, an hour or so after this um, life is finished. So let's see. 
uh jennifer said i like the species concept yeah yeah that's how we're trying to do as many as possible of course there's so many species um so yeah it's, it's a we great have a lot of work it's a <laughs> lot of work it's a lot of work but it's so many great species to absolutely work with and you know i think the more that you know about a, sp a certain species the easier it will be to work with that species because you know it's ins and outs right you know what it likes you know where it likes to grow and so that's that's something that I do all the time when I used to get new species when I was a beginner. I would try to read up everything there is to know about that species. And that just makes you so much better, right? Um, and so that's very important, I think. All right. Oh, and I see um, on TikTok, Stephen saying, we missed you and hey, hey. Tucson, Jerome. <laughs> I miss you guys too, man. I had a great time. <laughs> Uh, so a little bit of context. Uh, first of all, I thought for the longest time it was Tucson. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> so now I know better, thanks to Jerome who told me that everyone told him. <laughs> uh, so Jerome went last weekend to visit the club in Tucson, Arizona. And they had a great time, right? Tell us Phenomenal about time. So let's see. So on Friday when I got there, Right off of the airport, they took me uh, scouting for juniper bonsais, like Yamadori. So we went into the wild, into the middle of nowhere. Um, I was a little scared at moments, no, I'm just kidding. And we went hunting for some excellent bonsai material. Um, the next morning, we had a workshop with 18 people, which was amazing. Um, let's see, and then the last day that I was there, we did a uh, demonstration. <clears throat> so I did a demonstration in front of everybody. I worked on an Ilex tree and it was just so much fun. That club is amazing. So if you guys are in Arizona, close to Tucson, I really recommend that you check it out. All right. And in the meantime, I see um, Rami or hey Rami from hey, Rami. Dubai uh, is tuning happened, in with man? us today. Uh, I see a friend from Brazil. Hey, Marcela. Uh, hi from Germany on, on YouTube. My uh, bonsai. Uh, on my bonsai. Joselo, <laughs> hola. Hola, Joselo. Um, hi from Portugal, Antonio. Wonderful. All right. And um, I see on TikTok this great question. What soil do you recommend for bonsai? Yeah, so the soil that we use for all of our bonsai trees is the soil that we, it's our own soil mixture. It's an all-purpose soil mixture and it is made out of uh, pumice, lava rock, calcine clay, and pine bark. The easiest way to find it would be on our website, thebonsaisupply.com, and we do ship our soil and fertilizers internationally. So there is an option for that as well. And before you ask, the soil is ready to go as is, like you don't need to mix it with anything or do any work. Soil is ready to go. And it is also the exact same soil mix that we literally use for any every single species. So I've used this soil mixture for probably over 200 species in the past, and it works phenomenally well with all of them. So this, this soil um, is, it has pumice, lava, mm -hmm. calcine plain, and pine bark mm -hmm. and you can find it as um, universal mix or all-purpose bonsai soil from the bonsai supply uh, we we have it on our website the bonsai supply.com also on Amazon also on Home Depot and also I, on Walmart do we have a <laughs> do we have a bag so you can show oh. them how it looks oh my god I have everything I just don't Here. yeah can you so, see <clears throat> So this is the soil, this is the two quart bag of soil. We also have it larger in a 20 quart. And we also sell it in Canada for you Canadians on, at uh, Home Depot. So Home Depot CA in Canada, we sell it as well. Ship right to your door. Yeah, and that comes in different uh, sizes. That's our That's smaller right size. Here. Um, yeah, amazing. And uh, Rami is gonna go to sleep. Of course, it's three what? thirty-two a.m. He said. Rami, oh, grab goodness. a beer. Well, thank you for coming. Grab a in. beer and stay with us, man. <laughs> Have a good night. Um, 
Oh, and I see I just ordered that on Amazon. Didn't know it was you guys. Oh, see? Oh, Amazing. Happy Christmas. <laughs> hey, um, all right. And I have, I think I passed this question. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so Chris is talking about ficuses in Florida. Mm -hmm. How do ficuses do in Florida? Full sun or do they need to be taken inside when it gets cold? So, uh, ficuses do extremely well in Florida. That's also uh, their natural habitat. Like there's uh, ficuses that naturally grow, uh, like those banyan trees and stuff like that, that grow in Florida. Um, yes, you do want to protect them from temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And always watch the night temperature. That's something really important to, uh, you know, kind of remember that always watch the night temperatures and once they get below 50, you can just move them inside the house. That's probably the easiest way to, over, you know, to when it gets low cold, low cold spell. Um, oh, otherwise than that, grow them in full sun. Always full sun. All tropical trees, all tropical trees love full sun except for two species. Um, one species is the uh, Fukin tea, uh, also known as the Carmona microphylla, and the other one would be the Jabol Kaba. Besides those two species, everything that you can think of, put it out in full sun. All right. Um, do you guys ever go collect the collecting in Florida? Um, yes. <laughs> um, yes. So we do have, I do have a friend who owns a large property and we do go uh, ball cypress collecting every now and then. So, so yes, we do. And by we, it's only him because yeah. <clears throat> I... Personally, don't like <laughs> the, the idea of collecting in Florida. There are so many um, factors, such as uh, alligators and snakes and spiders. So, <laughs> if I'm honest, I also don't really do a lot of collecting. I just show up and I serve everybody who's digging beverages. <laughs> um, I don't like digging. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of digging, to be honest with you. <laughs> But you know, you gotta be honest with yourself. You can't be good at everything. So I'm honest, I don't like to dig. Yeah, and I see this great question from Antonio. So you don't use a karama, why? Ooh. Okay, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, so um, where should I begin? Okay, I begin here. Okay, so Akadama is a uh, Japanese uh, volcanic rock. Let's call it that. Um, what I don't like about the Akadama specifically is it slows down the growth of the tree. So when you use it on a young tree like this, the first thing that it will happen, it will slow down the growth tremendously. And you can't argue with that statement because that's true. So Akadama is good, but it's only good for trees that are, have been in development for a very, very long time. If you Google uh, bonsai masterpieces and you see some of these really old Japanese junipers that have been in training for like 400 years, that's what Akadama is good for. Anything else that's young like this, or even add another 50 years on top, Akadama would still not be good. Use something like this that has allows for more air to come in here, is more uh, free draining, and your tree will grow so much faster. And that's why I don't use Akadama. All right, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say RMX have um, some components that kind of take that job that the Akarama will take in some, exactly. some uh, people that like to use Akarama and for like half the price. So <coughs> that's, that's the other thing, to consider too. that's the other thing. I mean, Akadama is very expensive and I, I have been using Akadama side by side with this soil mixture for over 10 years. And I always went back to the soil, always went back to the soil. There's nothing that compares to it in terms of the amount of growth and health that you get with this soil. You just can't compare it. So finally, at some point, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give up on Akadama. I tried it. I've been there. I've done it. And I'm going to move on into this one. All right. Um, Garen, so what's next for this tree? When do you repot and remove the wire? Very good question. So removing the wire, once the uh, wire starts to bite into the branches, right? Once it starts to dig in a little bit, you can see a little bit of scarring, remove the wire. 
if the branches don't stay in place you might have to wire the uh, branches a second time but usually after the first wiring most branches stay in place now in terms of repotting whoever gets this tree you can still repot it even though it is flushing out but that's okay because it is it did come from a warmer climate you can still repot it you're perfectly fine just make sure that once you repot it you don't let it go below freezing anymore so just try to keep it above 40 degrees fahrenheit and out of direct wind for now that's it that's it that's it um oh i i love how i've seen on youtube before that when are we gonna start selling our soil in the uk and <laughs> now i see uh also from germany asking where they can get it in europe um so we don't have it available at the moment but funny enough jerome is actually from switzerland so <laughs> europe should be in our list now okay okay i got you so you're so saying i should look out for for my <laughs> homeland okay yes i mean no i mean well, you're right you're right um uh, trying to get it to you guys um okay well first organic fertilizer first organic <laughs> fertilizer but you know what this is something this is something that i will take a look at okay i promise um okay so estefan uh which is saying hello from austria oh hello wonderful we just came back from austria yeah too. we went we went there in january uh what Vienna. a beautiful place yeah. yes so the question what's the size of the pine bark you mix in your soil um so the size is about a quarter inch size so very small we get it in very large chips and then we reduce it ourselves. We dry it, we clean it, um, and we reduce it ourselves. So if you have ever used our, um, uh, bar, just the pine barks that we sell on our, on the, on the, by themselves, um, as an aggregate, you will see virtually no dust. It is that clean and no wood chips either. It is beautifully a uh, quarter inch sized. Mm -hmm. And I think, Thing. we probably use the same size for the shohin mix but i just wanted to clarify that we have um the regular size soil soil and they also have a shohin version which yep. is the same mix uh but the aggregates are smaller so for very small trees or shohin trees uh that's something that we also have available in case you good um, point yeah i mean you you're fine with either or but uh the shohin one just looks so great with like the size of the tree just looks proportional and the aesthetics are better so we also have that one available and those are tiny like i wouldn't yeah no exactly a size. oh that would be probably like smaller than an eighth of an inch so yeah those chips are then very very small but the uh, shohin we usually use it for trees that are potted in pots smaller than six inches Larger than six inches, we use our regular soil mix. All right. Um, let's see. So I see on TikTok, um, we did answer that question, but we can definitely uh, go back to it and refresh. Mm -hmm. So when do you know is the time to repot your tree? Okay. So like I said earlier, um, you know when it is time to repot your tree when it's like the latest time to repot your tree is when you water um you know the base right and the water kind of pulls on top and takes a little while to to seep down into the soil that would be the good time to repot the tree now before you ask i know you're gonna ask um it's very simple in terms of what do i repot what time of the year it's very very simple don't overthink it Temper trees are repotted in the spring as they start to grow up, uh, as they start to grow. So once you see a little growth on temper trees, that's when you repot. Everything else, so tropical trees, which is everything else, you repot in the summer. So once again, tropical trees in the summer and everything else in the spring. All right, so make I should sure have said it that way first. To <laughs> Google your species and Google what it is, if it's temperate or tropical, and then yeah, follow, follow this. Super simple, yeah, exactly. That's a good point, actually. Um, like, make sure you know what you have. 
And I see our friend on TikTok Disney Plans Daily. Oh, hey. hey. Say, hey, let's go. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, hey, let me go back on YouTube. John, hey, sorry to be late. This is, you're not late. You're, you're fashionable. Fashion oh, fashionably late, yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome in. We will put you um, on track of what we've been, we've been doing. This is a Chinese elm that Jerome is working on. We talked about um, uh, our book. We talked about our soil. We talked about the organic fertilizer that, that is coming up. Um, what else can we tell John? Let's see. What else can we tell John? Um, I think I think that's yeah, it. Think... That's all that has happened. You didn't <laughs> miss too much. Um, and John, you are in Alaska. That's amazing. Wow. Um, we're actually gonna take a cruise to Alaska in June. So we're very excited. We're excited to go see that part. Um, of the United States. I'm the father of triplets. Uh, we oh. are your biggest fans. Oh, this is John. So oh. please say hi to my triplets, Lawrence, Liam, Logan. And also my wife, Lori. Hello, Lawrence, oh, Liam, hello. Logan, and Lori. That's a lot of L's. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome in. Thank you for joining us. And Awesome. And John is also saying he loved the book. Oh, oh thank, thank you, John. Thank you so much. Um, Estefan, do you use copper or aluminum wire? No, so I actually never use copper. So I know a lot of people like to use copper wire uh, for like conifers. I use aluminum wire for everything. And the reason why is because I have never used copper wire. But aside from that, it is much more expensive than aluminum wire. And when you make a mistake, like let's say you make a bend like this and you're like, oh, I went the wrong way. With aluminum wire, you can just go like this and it's straight again. Whereas with copper, you would have to throw that away. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's the fun. It's funny. Jerome, why do you always hide your beautiful wife behind the camera? First of all, she hides <laughs> herself. Um, yeah, that is true. I hide myself. This was a personal decision. <laughs> well, um, somebody has to read the comments. Somebody has to read the comments. <laughs> yes. Um, but we can switch places if you want to. Definitely not. No? What? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, sometimes I do show some videos, so you gotta just take what you can take, you know? <laughs> um, let's see, John, if you make it to Alaska, let us know. We have to show you around. Oh, that's so sweet, John. What part of Alaska are you from, John? Um, I don't know, I'm from June, June, Juno? Juno, yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure we do stop. In Juno? Yeah. But we're just gonna take a cruise so the stops are Very really fast. Weird. But yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if there's something I mean, I'm I actually don't know much about Alaska. Like is there a bonsai club up there? I wonder. Does anybody know? Um yeah, let's know John if, if there's any bonsai clubs are that that's cool. I see on TikTok, um, Adam from Ireland. Hello, Adam. Hello. So I just got a nail bonsai tree. Yes, wonderful. They're great trees. Uh, let's see. When, okay, so it's on TikTok. When is the best time to repot a maple in a cold, cold climate country? Okay. So I just said it a couple uh, minutes ago, but I happily, of course, repeat it. So it's very, very simple. Write this down. Tropical trees are repotted in the summer and everything else under the sun gets repotted in the spring as soon as the first buds start to push. And that applies for everything. So in your Once case, you... it's a maple, so it's a temperate. So, so it will be is? in the spring. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you repot it in the spring, just make sure you don't let the tree dip below uh, freezing temperatures. So keep it above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, just to have a little bit of buffer there, and then you are good to go. All right. Um, 
it. Wonderful, wonderful. And we are on getting to the 45 minute mark. Woo! So how are we doing here? What else? Where are we? We are doing good. Um, I'm wiring out just a f some uh, fine uh, tuning here, but I'm uh, I'm, get I'm getting there. Uh, once I am finished, probably four more branches, and I am ready to go. Like in terms of like placing branches. All right, all right. So <clears throat> that was you reminding me that I worked too slow. No, no, no. I'm just. <laughs> Telling you uh, time. I love it. You know, so thank you, thank you. Track. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. So, what is like your favorite part of elms? Um, in general, elms. Yes. I like that they're so diverse from each other. Just within the uh, elm family. There's uh, different, 40 different types. Um, they're so diverse, like you have rough barks, um, like the Drake Elm has a different bark than like the Chinese Elm. So they all have different bark texture. Also the leaves vary slightly from each other. Um, I mean, they're so cool. I mean, what's not to like, you know? They're, they make the naturally a very cool bonsai tree. And they're also, readily available you know like you can mm -hmm. you can very easily acquire a uh, an elm tree like if you go to your uh local garden shop i'm sure they have elms there you know like that's how common they are so that's what i really like about them um i also like that they also have the fall color you can do anything with them you know like you can bare root them you can put them on top of a rock they will uh, cling to the rock and start to fuse very quickly like this is not a, a lot of year type of tree project, you know, you know, there's like some species out there that take you a very long time to create something. This is not. And that's why I like them so much. Yeah, I was always impressed uh, by the, the, like, how quick these trees just bounce back. Because yeah. when we used to bring them uh, over from overseas, they would just be, you know, bare rooted and they were in these containers for whatever amount of days, a lot of days. Uh, over a month, <clears throat> like 60 days sometimes. And once we'll have them with us and we'll, you know, pot them and all of that, it was like within a couple of weeks, they were all full of leaves again. Yeah, and phenomenal species. I was like, wow, this is a, it's definitely a great, great species to I mean, play with when you are, you know. <clears throat> Starting on I, I any level, but I think when you're starting, it's even better because it will give you that like confidence, you know, that you can do it. And I mean, I I'm always on the look out for a beautiful elm. Like if I see one, I want I want one. Like everywhere I go, I always look for a cool elm to to add to my collection, because that's how much I love them. Yeah, and like you said, they bounce back so fast. Yeah, and by the way, um, John said that there's nothing in, in Alaska close to him on, on bonsai clubs. I was just interested, I mean, never heard of it, so maybe you have to start one, John. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and talking about bringing trees from overseas, there's a question about... I'm about to overseas for several years. Can you please talk about the process of bringing trees back to the United States from overseas? So we haven't done it in, in a while now. Uh, probably what in the... So you would have to get yourself a broker. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah, so many different things that you need to fill out. I get dizzy just thinking <laughs> of it. Yeah, so once you have a broker, um, yeah, it usually takes, or it used to take, a, we really wouldn't know what is the situation right now because yeah. we haven't done it in a long time. And I'm sure after the pandemic, things uh, change. Um, but by then, when we were doing it like five years ago, um, you, you, you know, like the processing time was, as Jerome said, like about a month or so of, of transit and and then once we will get them, we'll uh, repot them and, and you know, kind of uh, wash them and make sure that they were recovering properly. 
obviously we're doing this in florida and florida's a little easier to acclimate the trees and get them back you know to to the regular state um i don't know how would it work in another place that is not florida so with that being said i don't think we're like the the best resource for the but overseas part the best piece of advice that i can give you is get yourself a good broker because the worst thing that could happen to you is that the trees are sitting uh you know at the port but they can't unload them because you forgot some sort of form and sometimes some form can take days and then your trees are just sitting at the at the port before they can and then you lose a lot of lot of trees very quickly so yeah and that's the other part you might have a better price as a bulk but they also you have a percentage that is just going to die and that's yeah yeah I mean, yeah it's definitely you need to have lots of experience to do it yeah um let's see what else i have here um oh antonio has an interesting question do you draw on paper before styling your trees i have never done that before i, I don't i don't understand that and I, I know there's a lot of people that do that and a really good friend of mine does that all the time too i never understood that like as soon as i look at a tree i always know which direction i want to go like within fairly quick amount of time so i don't know what the drawing is really for it's yeah. like some sort of inspiration. <laughs> Maybe it's an inspiration. But, but also, full disclaimer, I can't draw anything. <laughs> so if you ask me to do, draw a tree, it will probably look like a house. <laughs> I'm that bad when it comes to drawing. So that could also be why I don't draw. <laughs> For your sake. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, they're asking, how has you ever been to Japan? No, not yet, but it's definitely on my bucket list. But you know, here's also probably why I have not gone to Japan, because I love the Taiwanese bonsai so much more, and I have gone to Taiwan, of course. I'm a huge Taiwan fan in terms of bonsai. Even the Chinese bonsai is phenomenal, man. Like, really good stuff. So that's why I go... Those are my first choices before Japan, personally. Um, but also, Mari doesn't like long flights. <laughs> so. Yeah, on my defense, I just have kind of like a bucket list, and Japan is kind of in the bottom of it. <sighs> so I'm sorry, guys, for those that are Japan fans. I just have other, other countries uh, on okay, okay. before that. So, yes. no, we get it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, look on TikTok. Hey, I just saw your video where you drill holes to graft branches on a tree from, from February 5th. So a very fresh video. Yeah. Uh, any updates on those grafts? No, not yet. That takes a while. So I don't think I'm going to see any... I don't think I'm going to show an update until probably like June probably. I would say that by June I could probably remove... Uh, the graphs and show you an update but until then there's nothing because the tree hasn't even started growing yet so it's perfect timing to do the procedure but you know when you do stuff like this always be patient it takes a long time to actually show anything okay now we're gonna cut yes and ashram is uh doing the last cuts of the piece um there's a question from dan um I would like an indoor bonsai. So is there a plant that will live indoors? Um, there's a few trees that you can have indoors, such as ficuses, Hawaiian umbrellas, um, Fuki and Teas make good indoor bonsai trees, um, Chibota Kaba. And that's about it. There's not a lot of species that... Oh, dwarf jays, I'm sorry. There's not a lot of species that easily adapt to the indoor growing climate. So... But you got some options there. But you got a few Three, options, five, yes. Day, there's so um, trees that you can easily find. So yeah, I will. Yeah, we'll go with ficus or jade. Mm -hmm. Um, Archiflora as well could work. I said, I said, I said <coughs> uh, Let's see what else we have here. 
All right, so how are we doing over there? Are we pretty good? Pretty good. Last cuts, last cuts, last branch placements. Okay, I love it. Love it. So, if you guys see, Jerome pretty much wire, wire all of the branches of the branches that he thinks that will be part of the design. And then at the very end is when he actually does the last cuts. Um, and I will say you are a lot of like feeling the tree where it's like you don't know always where the tree is going to go. I never know. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, you figure it out with the tree what's the way to go. That's like your style. Don't know if it's like the easiest way to go about it, but definitely the way you go about it. Yeah, I mean, that's how I... So, I always kind of like, as soon as I start to work on a tree, I always know what direction I want to go with the tree, right? And then the next step for me is to remove everything that I don't like on the tree, right? Like all the branches that grow in the wrong direction. By wrong direction, I mean like they grow back into the trunk or they grow straight down or straight up or they kind of cross. So those are, or they're like too thick or they're too straight. Those are the branches I get rid of first. Um, Cause chances are, if I don't like it today, I will also not like it in five or 10 years from today. So that's why I do that first. Um, and then I just start to wire the branches that I do like. And, and then I end up with a piece like this. I think we are ready here. Fine wow. tuning, oh, fine so tuning. In a few seconds, we're gonna have okay. a 360 of this piece. And I want you to start thinking, if this was your tree, what kind of pot will you use uh, with this tree? So after Jerome gave us a 360 and leave us the front, uh, I want you to let me know in the comments, what pot will you use if it is um, oval, if it is rectangular, if it, it is glaze, unglazed, everything that comes to mind so we can play a little bit with options uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So. Ooh. Okay, so I think I am done here. So this is the front of my tree. Um, let's see here. Let me use something to mark it. So this is the front of my tree and let me tell you where I went with this tree and, and how I ended up here. So. I went for a more of a natural deciduous kind of feel, meaning that I want to have a larger canopy. I want the branches to kind of flow up and out. And I think that the finished canopy is going to be something like, something like this, right? So quite large. Um, we have that like very feminine look, like a lot of movement. Um, that's kind of what I went here for. And so I would recommend to just let the branches grow out until they uh, start to cut into the uh, branches and then I will cut it hard back and then it will fill out and then you're ready to go. Yep, that's right. my design. And did you give us your 360 or you just oh. go to the front? Okay, 360, here we go. Right. Sorry, when I talk sometimes I forget. <laughs> yeah. Awesomeness. Awesome. Awesomeness, awesome. Um, so what are we thinking in terms of pot? Yeah, so let us know. I know here I see uh, on YouTube, unglazed hex pot. All right. Hexagon, okay. Shallow oval, all right. You can never go wrong oval with shallow oval. Oval pot, okay, so I see okay. two oval. Uh, let's see what else we have over here. Well, um, let's see. Aside from Jerome's legendary yellow, yellow pot, I'll say a blue glazed rectangle pot. Okay, so from your guys' options, I think I can make this work. So, <laughs> on glaze hex pot. So, we have a hex pot that is glaze, and then we just have a rectangular one. So, I guess let's play with the okay. hex pot for the. Is glaze the one we have? So, uh, Anil, just pretend it is on glaze. So let's see, that's the first one that we hear from the comments. What mm -hmm. we hear from, we read from the comments. Maybe we can even fit it in here. Let's see. All right, all right. What do we think about that? Oh. I like it. It's kind of cool. I actually don't mind, even mind the blue. I mean, if okay. this was your pot, just shave this down. Uh, maybe I would not go that deep with it. Maybe a little more shallow, like maybe half the, the depth. 
That would be nice, I think. Yeah. All right. I like oh, it. No, not, not bad at all. <laughs> okay. So the other one, it says um, shallow oval. Shallow oval. Shallow oval. Shallow oval. Or oval. It says shallow or, or oval. Um, oh, there's a nice uh, oval up there. But... Oh, shallow oval. Well, I what mean, about the blue one right there? The blue one? No, that one. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, we're pointing at the same path. <laughs> okay. Okay, shallow oval coming up next. Um, by coincidence, also blue. That's <laughs> well, like a light blue. How does this look in terms of height? And oh, wow. Ooh, yeah, I think cool? I like that one. It might be a what well, you you will plant a little off, right? Off center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. I think the pot is a little too narrow too. I would like to see it a little larger too. Okay. Um, okay. Like wider. Okay, and to to um please one more of the comments. Blue glaze rectangle pot. Oh Right there to your left. Do you have a yellow pot to show? We only have one left that is very small, so I don't know if this mm. one wouldn't work. I need to stock back up on my yellow pots. We need new pots. Um, I'm gonna put an extra on glaze just because we have done all glaze once. What do we think about this one? Let's see? All right, that's very cute. Okay, that one's very nice too. All right. All right. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking? So right now we have seen the hex pot was the first one. Actually, then we have the oval pot, oval shallow, and really nice then we one. have the blue rectangular, and the very last one. Wait, the very last one. What's your last choice? I can't wait. Actually. To see. This is what I will pick. I like this one. So I'm just gonna put it up, up there. It's a round one. Look at that. Look at that. Little, YouTube? Little. No. Yes. YouTube? And I think YouTube. that's that's what I like. I know, let me see too. I'm curious. <laughs> Do you, have, yeah? you know that's actually that's actually a really good choice. Yeah. You know why? Because sometimes uh, on some Chinese elm variations, the new leaves come out in like a, a copper color. Oh, that's nice. Before it turned to like a light green and then a dark green. Um, okay. Yeah, you're too far away to show you, but there's a few on here. So that's actually a fantastic match, actually. Yeah. Uh, match the leaves somehow, like either with, like just the characteristics of the tree. That's a very good point. Okay, really like that. amazing. So we have some so options. Okay. The tree looks great with, uh, actually, it kind of looks great with anything anyway. That, that means it's a good tree. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for uh, those that might not know, this tree is going to go on our website, thebonsaisupply.com, in about an hour or so for an auction that you can bid for the next 48 hours. This is for participants in the United States only, but you can actually bid for this tree and get it shipped straight to your home. And uh, we wanted to throw something else with this because, you know, it was Valentine's Day yesterday and two are better than one. So we actually have an extra pre-bonsai they will you will get with uh, this tree so you can also experiment and do your own um, wiring and what I love about this pre bonsai by the way is the trunk show the trunk, show is the crazy. trunk how cool that is I mean can, how can you see it yeah first of all the roots in here. here let me pull it out a little bit to me that looks like the tree is doing a split it really is <laughs> can you see it better now Yes, yes. So, you guys, as I said, there's this also is a little deadly bonus feature over here. I really like it. For Valentine's Day, two for one. So, you will, you will bid for this uh, wire tree, but also will get this extra uh, so you can play around with. Two for one. Yes. And I think we are ready to wrap it up. Let's let, let them know. To, as a summary, what you did today and what the person who gets this tree should do when they get it. Okay. 
So as a summary, uh, we chose the front of the tree first, and then we started to remove the uh, most obvious branches, uh, which was this, there was a thick piece up here. It looked like two horns. So we removed one of them to expose the tree more. And then I removed more of the obvious branches that were not supposed to be there. Like there were sections where like three branches came out of the exact same section. So I reduced it down to one. And then I just started wiring and I started placing the branches into the approximate, uh, you know, vicinity to give me that finished uh, piece here. And that's really what we did here today. Um, so now whoever gets this, you can repot both of the trees right away. Um, obviously this one you see it has leafed out a lot more. So on this one I would reduce less of the root ball, but this one since it is popping, you can reduce as much as you want, but you can repot both of them. You can style this right away. You can wire it. You can go crazy. <laughs> All right. Amazing. So thank you everyone that joined the live today. Um, mm -hmm. You are invited to bid for this tree in about an hour or so when it will be available on our website, thebonsaisupply.com. And that's it. <laughs> see you guys next time. See, oh, well, I was oh, working. I was. Your, I was working up to that. I was. I was waiting for you to finish, <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> bye bye.